My girlfriend dumped me over a forgotten lipstick. Seven months later, she tried to pin her pregnancy on me, but a DNA test exposed her lies. So, after a couple of fights, I cut off all my friends who happened to be women because Debbie was more important to me than being friends with other women. And it wasn't just friends from college who I stopped talking to, but I also stopped speaking to my school friends who had been friends with me for more than five years at that point. I am back to talking to them because Debbie is not in my life anymore and my wife is cool with my friends regardless of gender. But back then, I was just friends with my guy friends and I wasn't even allowed to go out with them to have a boys' night because Debbie believed that it would just be an excuse for us to all go to bars get wasted and pick up girls. I didn't think that was fair to me because she had forbidden me from seeing anyone without her because of how insecure she was. But I couldn't see how wrong it all was because I was too in love with her. And I felt like she was too. She would tell me all the time about how much she loved me and said that she couldn't live without me. She couldn't imagine a future without me and whatnot. So I stayed, despite everything, because I wanted to marry her and be with her. That's all what I wanted. But with time, it became more and more difficult to stay with her since she just kept getting more suspicious and weirder about me. By the time we were living together, I couldn't do anything without her breathing down my neck. She would check my phone all the time. She would monitor my movements, and if I didn't update her on my location at all times, then she would threaten to lock me out when I came back home. So by now, you guys have some idea about how toxic our relationship had turned by the time we broke up. I still somehow found it in me to stay with her, but then, surprisingly, she is the one who broke up with me. And it was over something insane, because it was just a small misunderstanding that led to our breakup. One day, my sister visited me without announcing her visit, which she usually did. Debbie wasn't at home when my sister Lauren, 33, female, dropped by. Debbie was at a friend's place because she was allowed to meet her friends, and I wasn't allowed to suspect her. Anyhow, Lauren surprised me by dropping in unannounced, and I was so surprised to see her that I didn't even text Debbie to tell her that Lauren had come over, which I would have usually done. We got to talking, and we spent around two hours together at home. But then, all of a sudden, she received a call from her boss and had to leave to go back to work urgently. The thing that caused my breakup was, unfortunately, the lipstick that Lauren had left behind which she had taken out to reapply it before she headed back to work. She was in a rush to leave, so she forgot it on the couch, and it was so small that I didn't notice it either. Then, Debbie came back home a little after Lauren left, and she seemed happy until she found the little lipstick. I still remember it as clear as day. She sat on the couch and sprang back up as soon as she sat, then grabbed the lipstick that she had sat down on, and I instantly knew that I was screwed, because there was no way in hell that she was going to let this one go so easily. I tried to downplay it and told her the truth instantly. I told her that Lauren had come over to visit during her lunch hours, and she had taken out the lipstick to reapply it because she had to go back to work. I explained this to her, she was rushing to go back home so she had forgotten to put it back in her purse. But Debbie wasn't accepting any of my explanation. She just completely lost it when I told her Lauren had come over. You're lying. She screamed at me. There's no way your sister was here. You are making this up because you had some girl over here. I tried to remain calm and reason with her. I swore that I was telling you the truth. Why would I lie about this? Lauren stopped by unexpectedly during her lunch break. That Vassar lipstick she left behind. Debbie didn't believe me at all. She picked up a glass from the coffee table and hurled it across the room, shattering it against the wall. She told me that I was a liar and a cheat, and that she had wasted four years of her life with me. I told her that she was acting completely insane. I told her that I was not lying and had never cheated on her. But she wasn't listening at all. The screaming insults just kept flying, calling me every vile name imaginable. I had never seen her in such a blind rage before. At one point she even hurled her car keys at me, which thankfully missed and hit the wall instead. After nearly an hour of this intense back and forth screaming match, with no chance to get a word in or defuse the situation, Debbie finally hit me with the ultimatum. She told me to get out of her apartment that night. She told me that she was done with me and that it was over. I just stood there stunned for a moment. Was she seriously ending our four-year relationship over this bizarre misunderstanding? But the crazed look in her eyes showed she absolutely meant it. Seeing no other options, I went to our bedroom to start packing my belongings into a couple suitcases and boxes. I gathered everything I could take with me. I couldn't believe this was how it was ending with Debbie after four years together. But over something so completely stupid, within a couple of hours, all my stuff was packed up and I said one last goodbye, be king for her to reconsider and give me a chance to properly explain and make things right. She just coldly told me to leave and never contact her again before slamming the door on my face. I felt devastated. I wound up crashing on a friend's couch for the next couple weeks in an absolute shock and depression. I could barely eat or sleep, just lied there replaying every memory with Debbie over and over in my mind. All the good times, all the laughs, all the intimacy and talks of spending our lives together, it was all over in an instant, because of her jealousy and refusal to listen to reason. I tried calling her dozens of times to no avail. She blocked my number and all social media. Text messages went unread. At one point I even went back to the apartment and banged on the door for nearly an hour before giving up and leaving a handwritten letter pleading for her to let me explain everything. 
When that failed, I reached out to Lauren and asked if she could try talking some sense into Debbie, since she I had told her about the whole innocent situation. But Debbie instantly accused my sister of lying to cover for me as well. You were probably in on it together. She apparently screamed before hanging up on Lauren. I felt so hopeless and like my entire world had shattered into a million pieces. How could someone I loved more than anything, who claimed to love me just as deeply, throw away years of commitment and perseverance over one small meaningless incident? More importantly, how could she flat out refuse to let me explain the truth and work through it? Didn't our relationship and my love mean anything to her at all? As the weeks dragged on, I knew I had to try and move forward as impossible as that seemed. With the support of friends and family, I eventually pulled myself out of that dark spiral. I forced myself to start going through the motions of daily life again. Getting out of the house, looking for a job, making attempts to casually date though my heart wasn't in it at all. Little by little, the cloud started to lift, but I will never forget the deep emotional trauma of having years erased in a blind fury without any chance for explanation or reconciliation. If it was one of the most excruciatingly painful experiences of my life and really shook my faith in love for a long time. I just hoped that eventually the scars would heal enough to open my heart again to someone worthy of the trust and commitment I had for Debbie. Update number one. It took several very long and painful months, but I finally started feeling like myself again after the devastating breakup with Debbie. With the love and support of my friends and family, especially my sister Lauren, the cloud of depression slowly began to lift. Then one random day around seven months after the blow-up with Debbie was standing before me with a very obvious baby bump. She looked to be around seven months pregnant. I was completely caught off guard. Rather than any sort of greeting, she just came right out with it in an accusatory tone that she was pregnant, and it was mine. I was shocked. How is that even possible? We broke up months ago. She said that she got pregnant right before that whole blow up. So, the baby is definitely mine as per her. I didn't want to believe what she was saying. No way it was mine. But she instantly cut me off, that familiar anger flaring up. Don't even try denying it. I know for a fact the math lines up and you were the only guy I was sleeping with back then. So, man up and take responsibility for once. If what she was saying was true, my life was about to change forever. I was going to be a father. The thought was absolutely terrifying and thrilling all at once. I was stunned. I wanted to be sure that it was mine. Debbie said impatiently that yes, she was sure that the baby was mine. According to her, we had sex in like mid-August before she lost it and kicked me out. So I suddenly remembered we did have one final intimate night together in mid-August right before everything fell apart so disastrously. Could she actually be right about the dates lining up? If so, that meant we made this baby before the big blow up. Debbie's tone suddenly softening to one of pleading. I was angry and stupid, but this is so much bigger. But we made a child together, whether you like it or not and I want us to be a real family now. I gaped at her in shock as she continued. That's why I'm here to ask you to marry me and we can raise this baby the right way as parents who love each other like we used to. Just weeks ago, I assumed I would never see or hear from Debbie ever again after the traumatic way she ended things. And now here she was very pregnant and proposing to me. I told her that I need time to process and think rationally about what's best. She instantly cut me off, getting angry again in an instant. What do you mean you need time? There's no time, you idiot. I'm seven months pregnant with your damn kid, and we're going to get married right now so our child has a stable home. I deeply regretted ever dating someone this irrationally volatile. Debbie jabbed her finger into my chest and said that if I won't marry her right now like a real man, she would take me to court and make sure I pay child and support for the next 18 years whether I was in that kid's life or not. She was damn serious. Debbie had completely lost her mind here. How could she be demanding I either marry her this instant or she'll financially drown me? This was total insanity. I told her to calm down and told her that this was way too much for me to process or make any rash decisions about. I said that I was not saying no, I was just saying I needed some reasonable time to think this through. Think this through? She exploded, seemingly having a mental breakdown right there in my doorway. There's no thinking needed. This is your kid whether you accept it or not. I'm not giving you any kind of time, it's either you man up and marry me in the next week or I'll see you in court. End of story. With that unbelievable outburst, Debbie turned and stormed off down the hallway leaving me leaning against the doorframe and feeling like I might actually vomit. After spending a couple of hours laying down, I attempted to look at things more rationally. I pulled out a calendar and started counting backwards from Debbie's claimed due date in June and cross-referencing it to when we had our final intimate encounter in August before the nasty breakup. And that's when I realized Debbie had to be wrong. The dates didn't actually line up at all based on how far along she seemed to be. In fact, if my math was correct, she got pregnant at least a month or more after we stopped being intimate and went our separate ways, which meant the baby couldn't possibly be mine like she was swearing up and down. I kept going over the dates again and again, trying to find any miscalculation that could make Debbie right. But I kept coming to the same conclusion. The timeline showed there was no way I was the father of this child. I felt a strange mix of relief that I wouldn't be an unprepared parent after all, but also frustration that Debbie seemed to be trying to dupe me in some way. When she showed up at my door again a week later, 
I was prepared to lay out the evidence and timelines to disprove her accusation that I fathered her child. I told her that I have looked at the timelines very closely based on the date she gave me. And the reality is, there's no way this baby was mine. The dates don't add up at all. She looked momentarily stunned before the anger returned full force. What? What the hell are you talking about? Of course it's yours. I haven't been with anyone else for over a year before we broke up. I told her that that might be what she thought, but based on the due date, this kid had to have been conceived well after she and I went our separate ways. I would be happy to sit down and show her the math, but there's just no way this was my child, she shouted furiously, getting in my face. Just admit you knocked me up and be a damn man about this. I stood firm, refusing to be intimidated or allow her to bully me. I simply won't admit to something that's not true just because she wants it to be. If the dates matched up, I would absolutely take full responsibility. But they don't, so this baby cannot possibly be mine. Debbie kept ranting and raving at the top of her lungs, calling me every horrible name in the book. But I simply waited her out calmly until she was done with the tantrum and took a few deep breaths. She then glared at me through gritted teeth before spinning around and storming off again without another word. Her pride was too thick to admit any miscalculation or potential mistake. She seemed absolutely convinced she could bully and threaten me into just blindly accepting her claim. True to her word, I received papers from her lawyer a few weeks later filing for child support custody rights, and even reimbursement for prenatal-slash-childbirth costs since I was the father. I immediately contacted a lawyer of my own to fight this and present all the evidence disproving paternity. Over the next few months leading up to the birth, there were several court hearings and attempts to get an early paternity test, which Debbie actively fought against. She kept insisting she shouldn't have to prove anything since I was clearly the father. My lawyer had to keep tempering my anger at how determinedly convinced she was trying to scam and defame me. When she finally had the baby in June, the judge immediately ordered a paternity test as a first priority before any other matters could proceed. Debbie kept ranting and raving right up until those test results came back a few weeks later. I'll never forget the look on her face when the judge opened the envelope and said, Based on these certified lab results, it has been conclusively proven that Mr. Smith is not the father of this child. It was the same dumbstruck, slack-jawed expression of someone who had their entire personality and worldview shattered into a million pieces in an instant. She didn't say anything, she just shook her head repeatedly in disbelief. My name was fully cleared exactly as I insisted it would be from the start. But there was no happiness or joy, just a sad unreality to the whole scenario. Part of me almost felt sorry for Debbie, watching a lifetime of delusions and fabrications crumble right before her. The judge immediately dismissed the case and all claims of custody or support against me. Debbie and her lawyer quickly ushered out of the courtroom in stunned silence. I don't know what she told people or how she explained the ruling, but I didn't really care either. Finally, after what seemed like a lifetime of accusations and drama, I was free and clear of any ties or wrongdoing connected to my toxic ex. It allowed me to take a deep breath and continue moving forward with my life without her insanity weighing me down anymore. Thankfully, I haven't heard a single peep from Debbie again since that day. I'm sure she's still trying to wrestle with the humiliation of having all her warped lies so conclusively exposed, and the reality of being a single mother with an unknown father in the picture. As for me, I did everything I could to be the reasonable, rational one despite her best efforts to drag me down. In the end, the truth prevailed.